You will find him. You will find him, but you've got to look for him. You can't sit on your tail and expect God to come do everything for you. Shepherds came to worship him. Shepherds. Can I just be real with you? Shepherds were not the high society folks at the time. Shepherds smell like what? Sheep. Sheep. I had to say that for somebody says I'm stupid. They smell like sheep. Shepherds smell like what they're around. Nothing wrong with that. That's what they do. And if you've ever had a wool coat, thank a shepherd. Yep. Yes. Oh, no. you ever had anything that was made out of lamb? And you like lamb? I'm not real crazy about lamb. So, but, but if you like lamb, <laughs> thank a shepherd. Because they're the ones that take care of that sheep. They're the ones that, sheep are so stupid. I, I, I could do a, a whole thing and you'd be offended that Jesus called us sheep. But uh, they're so stupid. Their legs are too short to hold any weight. They're, they, they're really, they can't see very well. They have no sense of direction. They can't, they, they, they can't swim. If they fall in a dish, they lay there with their legs sticking up in the air, screaming until somebody finds them. Yeah. They, don't get up, they don't get up by themselves. They're, they're easily trapped. They're easily, uh, uh, predators easily kill them. They're easily lost. Huh? They're totally they're perfect. They're totally dependent upon a shepherd, which is what Jesus' point whole, the whole point was. Yeah. Is that they're really stupid, and they have no sense of if a water, how, how fast water is going. So some of them drown because they get in rivers that are flowing too fast because they're trying to get a drink. Because they have no no concept of danger. They're just they're dumb. And Jesus called us. Sheep. Love you, Lord. Love you, Jesus. Favor. Amen. Favor. We're his favorite sheep. Yeah. It's just how we are. The shepherds come to worship him. And I love the story how the angels come and tell the shepherds. You notice he didn't, the angels didn't go and tell the city. They went out and, I don't know if you know this or not, but there's not a whole lot of fields in the middle of the city. It's like, okay, if you're ever looking for an airport and someone drives you downtown, they're, okay, there's no airports downtown. I'll just say that because they, there has to be a place for airplanes to fly, okay? And so that, that's why airports are on the outskirts of cities, okay? Just letting you know. Okay, so there's no, there's no fields in the city. The angels come to the field and tell the shepherds. That's in Luke chapter 2 if you write that down. The shepherds are now the ones that are announced to that Jesus has been born. Come and see. Come and see. See, they may have missed the star, but they didn't miss the call. See, some of us have maybe missed the star. We, we got lost. We had to ask directions, and they didn't really know where the, how to get you to the star, but we didn't miss the call because God's always calling somebody to Jesus. God's always got somebody calling somebody to Jesus. And you may have missed your opportunity. Maybe you walked by the manger and never even thought about a baby being born in a manger as a life-changing event. And I was fortunate enough when I went to, to Alaska, to Israel twice, that we got to see an actual manger, what they call a manger, and it, it's not the little wooden things we put hay in on the plate. Yeah. It's a cement box yeah. that's attached to the wall. Just a cement box. Mortar box, I don't know if it's mortar. <laughs> they do put some hay and stuff in it for the, for the, uh, the animals to eat. But it's not movable. It's not removable, listen, with a hammer. It is attached to the floor and the wall. It is a box. It is not something that they took with them when they went home. 
They took the baby, but they left the manger. Because the manger was part of the barn. The part of the walls of the barn. I, I don't know if you have ever thought about it. Maybe I'm just weird. but It's amazing to me how God doesn't use things forever that he doesn't need forever. What are you talking about? Jesus didn't have his own tomb. He had a borrowed tomb because he didn't need it forever. Okay? He didn't have a portable manger because he just needed it for a little bit. And he left it for the people who own the barn. He didn't take their manger. I think it's just amazing to me that the shepherds were called from the fields. And can I get a little spiritual with you? Come on. We call this a mission what? Field. Field. <laughs> We're called to work in God's fields. Right? right. Yep. What's that old song? Help me. I know y'all know it. Uh, hang on. It's, no, no, no. It's a... Uh, I'll think of it in a second. That's it. I can't remember the... My house is full, but my fields are empty. Thank you, Dean. I knew you would know it. I, just couldn't, I couldn't get it out of my head. My house is full. But my fields are empty. Who will go and work the field? It's called the field. The, the angel called the shepherds from the what? The field. The calling of God doesn't just happen in the city or the inn. It happens to those that are in the field. Mm, that's good. That is good, amen. They were not called just to come to a barn. But they were called into the presence of God. I'm trying to hurry. I know it's a little after 12. I'm trying to hurry up. <clears throat> they were not called just to a barn, says Jehaika. Did you get to go to the place where the manger was? Yeah. They were called to the presence of God. And I love it when people say, oh, I'm just going to tell God I did my best. No, no, no. He, Jesus, even as a baby, they knelt down in his presence. Now, I know you're all big and bad now because you think you're going to live forever. But there's going to come a time when you're going to stand before God himself and you're going to stand before Jesus and you're going to give an account. Come on. There's going to come a time and you're going to stand before him <coughs> naked, and, uh, naked and ashamed or naked and unashamed. One of the two. Yeah. And you're going to stand before him, and everybody that thinks that you're so big and bad, you're just going to do, tell God, I just did my best. No, baby, no, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> I can only imagine. So, so listen. Sorry. There was no room for them in the end. And I love this because I love how God does these things. Because he wasn't only for the privilege. But he's for those men who are out of that field working. It was for the wise men that brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We don't know if there was three wise men or 300. We don't have any idea. They just get three gifts. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That's pretty substantial. And we have, it was for some, for some shepherds who had nothing but themselves to bring. And some sheep. But it was for all of those. There was no room for them in the end. So everybody in the end, it was for them as well. Everybody in the barn, it was for them as well. And the, there was no room in the end, and I, I've said this a hundred times, and I, I stole it from Rock Parts, but I don't use it anyway. It says, where else should a lamb be born but in a barn? Where else should a lamb be born but a barn? Because he was born to be the lamb, the sacrificial lamb. So where else should he be born? Now I'm going to finish with this. Jesus brings us all together. Why are you here today? You're not here to see me. You weren't here to hear the songs. You weren't here to see everybody. You're here for a common goal, Jesus. We're all here together, and I'm glad to see you, and I love you, and I'm glad to see every one of you, and I, I genuinely believe that, and I genuinely mean that when I tell you I love you, and I genuinely love to see you. I, I miss you when you're not here. I, I miss your face. But hear me, I, I'm not the reason you're here. I better not be the reason you're here. Jesus brings us together. In every walk of life, from a young couple named Jer Joseph and Mary, a young couple who 
had to come together and say, we're either going to believe this together or not. A young converted couple, because Jesus' first converts were Joseph and Mary. How about the older men, the wise men? They had to believe too, and he brought them together with Joseph and Mary. How about the, the workers, the shepherds? Those that weren't rich, and those that had not a lot of money, but yet they had a lot because God called them the shepherds. He brought the rich together too because, because he, he told the, the palace, Herod, Herod brought him to the palace and said, show me where they're at, show me where they're at. I want to go worship. Yeah. You have to make a decision. He brought the poor together. He brought them all together in a place. Now understand that the wise man didn't show up at the manger. He was two years old when the wise men found him, so he's still in the manger at Frogs. But he still brought them together. Please understand that no matter where you're at this morning in your life, there's a starting point. His name is Jesus. Amen. And you maybe you got there when he was born. Maybe you have been in church since birth. Maybe you've been in church since your age plus nine months. You, you don't know. Maybe, maybe all you know is church. But maybe you just figured out there's a star and i got to follow that. And maybe you just found him. And it's been a few weeks. It's been a while. Maybe you were just called out of the field. And maybe you got to be part of, his, of, his, of him in the, in the manger when he was little. And maybe you've been in church a long time. Maybe not all your life, but most of your life. Or maybe you're poor today and God said, listen, there's a better way to live. And i got something for you. Not just pouring money, but maybe pouring spirit. Maybe you have everything you ever needed, but you still need him. He brings us all together. Amen. And I'm going to throw, throw this in there and I'm going to quit. Get you out of here. Please don't let Christmas destroy you. It's not a story of destruction. It's a story of putting you together and bringing you together and uniting you together. Church, in the next year, God has given me a word for us, which is finish it. Finish it. I don't know what that entails. It's just what he's spoken into my spirit. Finish it. I don't know. That's good. That's a big, wide spectrum. And God will zone it in a little bit. But finish it. And as pastor, can I tell you, I need our youngs. I need our middles. I need our olds. And I need everybody. I'm so tired. And I need you. Please don't ever think that you're not vital. Even if I don't pat you on the back. And, and I'm very, listen, I, I'm a decent preacher. I'm a horrible administrator. I know my, I am. I'm working on the administration part. I really am. I, I, I have, you have to know what your flaws are before you can fix them. And I know that flaw in my life is I'm a horrible administrator. I'm trying to fix it. I would rather preach a sermon than have two meetings. I'm just, I just, I would. I just would. It has nothing to do with you. It has to do with me. And I'm trying to fix that in me. But please understand, I need you. This church, if we're to follow, we're to do what God says to do. If we're to follow the star that God has placed in front of us, we gotta have. Everybody, I gotta have Joseph. I gotta have a Joseph and a Mary. I gotta have shepherds. I gotta have wise men. I, I gotta have those that are that are, that are called from the field. We gotta have everybody together, wrapping us up and getting this thing going forward. We have to have you. And sometimes I'm not very good. I try to honor everybody I can from the pool. I, I do. I mean it when I say it that I appreciate you and I thank you and I thank God for you. I do. There's not a ministry in here I don't, I'm not thankful for. But please don't be offended if, I, if I'm preaching to young people and you don't feel neglected. I, I just I have to look 20 years down the road. And in 20 years, I'll be 70. I don't plan on being here. in this book at 70. That's just my plan. I don't know what God's plan is. But it's not my plan. It's not my plan. But God has ways of changing plans. I just I have to look 20 years down the road. In 20 years. He's 70 years old. He's <laughs> Woo. 
Nate, how are you better than 20 years? <laughs> oh my goodness. That's hard to think though, isn't it? It's hard to think that. And so... <laughs> Beat you. <laughs> year we need to finish it. I don't know what that means yet, but we'll get there in a minute. Finish it. Amen? Amen. Anybody, everybody okay? Yes, amen. From my family to yours, we love you. Thank you. Have a Merry Christmas. We love you very, 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 very much. And we're very thankful. Can you stand to your feet and be...